Hey y'all, I I promised Kate, our marketing person, that I would stop opening with uh, "Hey gamers" as a joke on uh, on Twitch since we're posting this on YouTube and Instagram and stuff. It's so hard not to do it, so I'll just say, "Hey y'all, uh, I'm Lewis at Money Positive, uh, doing my weekly stream, and whew, I've got one that's kind of heavy and kind of." Uh, emotional for me and I'll be honest I've been putting it off uh, because I wasn't quite sure how to tackle it and I'm not still not quite sure that I, you know I'm gonna do a great job but it's important and I wanted to uh, stop using excuses like it's a there's a big ice storm here in Austin and I have been able to come into the office where I do my streams and I was like oh well I can't do this one uh, today because you know the, the ice storm I better stay away I'll I'll uh, go in and do some quick thing about IRAs or something um, but uh, what's been on my mind a lot lately and is the point of today's stream is talking about uh, finances for trans and non-binary people uh, we have a lot of clients who are trans and non-binary. I have a lot of very important people in my life who are trans and non-binary. And uh, they have uh, unique planning needs, unique needs as people that are often uh, unrecognized or are actively um, disregarded or disrespected. And I wanted to talk about some of the things that we do and some of the things that I've seen as a planner who happens to work with uh, quite a few trans and non-binary people. Obviously, uh, uh, I might not be the perfect person to talk about this. I am a straight middle-aged white man in Austin, Texas. I am not trans and, um, but like I said, a lot of important people in my life are. And I've learned a lot from them and from working with them and wanted to share from that experience. Uh, we uh, love working with trans and non-binary clients. It's something we have a lot of experience with. We, you know, welcome, welcome more. I do want to give a shout out to River Nice at Be Intentional Financial. Uh, They're up in Philadelphia and working with trans and non-binary binary clients is their specialty. And I've learned a lot from their Instagram and their media and just think they're wonderful and they have a great practice. So please check them out. Uh, so they're, they're, you know, working with people as a personal financial planner is a very personal relationship. It's not just numbers. It's a lot of, um, you know, uh, of intimate details about people's lives. I've had people who have you know i didn't know that they were trans or not binary when we met and they've had to you know essentially come out to me um or you know i'm one of i'm often one of the first people to know when someone has a uh, big event in their life which you know might be buying a house or having a kid or moving but it might be uh publicly transitioning and they need to plan for it um first uh as a planner is we always ask everybody for pronouns Lewis Weil he him and I have it in my profile when in my video chats uh, we always ask for it and you know respect what people put in their uh, responses we are legally required to know people's legal names um, but sometimes you know if someone has a dead name that they don't go by and you know don't want to hear uh, oftentimes people live in states where it's hard to change uh, change their name or their gender marker. Um, you know, we ask for it on onboarding. It, we, have a, we have a special field for it and then it is archived and will never be seen again unless it's being handed to an auditor. Like, I don't see that name. The only name that we'll, you'll see on your dashboard is the one you've told us to use. Um, gender... Uh, uh, Trans and non-binary people often have expenses around transitioning, uh, gender-affirming surgeries that are not uh, covered by insurance, assuming that they have insurance. 
uh, oftentimes require a lot of travel and time off from work and out-of-pocket expense, often involve uh, flying out a friend or family member to help provide care while they're um, recovering and can cost easily tens of thousands of dollars um, in just out-of-pocket expenses and lost wages. Uh, that doesn't include, um, you know, hormone replacement therapy, drugs, and other uh, prescriptions and medicines to help with uh, gender-affirming transitions. And uh, so, you know, those are just expenses that cis people don't have to pay, that uh, trans people have to build into their, you know, it's on them to figure out how to do it. And uh, one thing I've seen is that, uh, you know, one of the biggest financial struggles is just transitioning is hard. People lose their jobs a lot of times or don't feel comfortable in jobs that they have after transition and uh, while transitioning and uh, often change jobs or careers, lose jobs or careers, and it can take a long time to get back to work and to get back to some place where they feel safe. Um, you know, going through, uh, you know, hormone replacement therapy is basically like going through uh, puberty again. Imagine, you know, what it was like, you know, for you as a teenager going through puberty, like trying to do that in a very public way uh, while holding a job is is really hard. So even in the most supportive places, it's challenging, uh, which ends up being challenging to finances and can kind of create a spiral of, you know, mental health issues of uh, because, you know, because in, you know, we we put a lot of our self-worth on our ability to make and earn money. Um, therapy is another uh, expense that is very common. I mean, it's very common with all clients, myself included. Uh, I think, you know, therapy is extremely valuable. But even when you're supported and, uh, you know, going through a, a supported transition, uh, therapy is very valuable and provide guidance in someone's life uh, as they go through uh, a as big a major life event as you can imagine. Um, and oftentimes therapists are uh, out of, you know, are out of pocket expenses for everybody. They're not always covered by insurance. And even if they are, there's payments, but therapy is very expensive. And so a lot of times someone who just lost their job, just spent tens of thousands of dollars to undergo uh, uh, gender affirming treatments is also has to find, you know, a couple hundred, several hundred dollars a month uh, in therapy just to help them get back to, um, you know, being able to live their lives. Uh, so, you know, there are, there are expenses and burdens that uh, trans and non-binary people have that, um, that cis people don't and might not be aware of and not um, uh, understand. And I just have, I've just seen it uh, in, you know, friends and people that we work with. And the one that's the really hard um, that I've been noticing, I'm in, like I said, I'm in Austin, Texas. Uh, we help people plan big life events and moves and changes. And one thing I've noticed is that we're helping trans and non-binary clients uh, to plan moves away from states where they no longer feel safe. There are a lot of laws and um, uh, attitudes in certain states that are discriminating against trans non-binary people that are disrespectful or trying to uh, dehumanize them and trans non-binary people no longer feel safe uh, which is just awful like I feel I feel I feel awful that you know my home state Texas like the name means friendship um, that there are people who don't feel safe here anymore and we have to help them plan basically their escape and you know as as a Jew I feel uh, morally and uh, personally obligated to help someone uh, figure out how to get to safety I would not be here if my uh, 
you know, ancestors hadn't had the instinct to leave Europe when they did. Uh, and I'm sure that there were many people that helped them along the way. And um, I never imagined that I would have to be uh, helping people figure out their own escape. Um, if you don't feel safe, uh, money should be the last thing on your mind. You can do, you know, when, when we're helping people do it, we can do it in a, you know, cl existing clients, we can help them do it in a methodical way, see what their expenses are, what their savings are, how much savings they would have when they arrive in uh, wherever they're going, in whatever place where they feel safe within the country or, or in other countries, and can help them budget for it. Um, if you're not in a position to do that, uh, do what you need to. Um, you can, money is a tool. If you need to use credit cards to buy plane tickets or pay for a move, do what you have to do to feel safe. The you know, just, actual safety, of course, is important, but also just the weight, uh, the anxiety of not feeling safe is much more costly than uh, having to figure out how to pay off a credit card someday. Uh, so, you know, do what you have to. Um, my calendar is open. Go to moneypositive.com and I will give a free session or two to anyone who just needs help figuring out how to uh, move and get somewhere where they're safe. Uh, just, you know, Put in, you know, put a note in the in the when in the calendar invite that you're, you know, contemplating a move or something and just want help. I'll I'll get the message, um, and don't feel like you need to stay behind uh, and fight the good fight. Like, uh, you know, if you're in a position where you feel like you can do that, great, but don't feel guilty about leaving. Um, that is what allies are for like we're you know to stay and fight the good fight and hopefully you know things turn around and trans non-binary people everyone feels uh safe in this state and in this country again uh i just think it's a real tragedy that we've reached this place um but i know people you know can learn and have it in their hearts to be compassionate and help and turn things around and people at Money Positive are here for you. Uh, Lewis, L-E-W-I-S, at moneypositive.com. Info at moneypositive.com will also get to me. The link's on our website. We're here to answer questions and provide pro bono help to people who, who need it. And uh, to ongoing clients, we can you know, help them in very detailed ways. Um, but, you know, I hope this has been helpful to you if it's relevant to you or if it's, you know, news to you, that it's enlightening. Um, it feels good to have finally done this and shared. And, you know, I hope everyone is well and safe. And thank you for staying this, uh, staying this far and listening. Stay money positive. Take care.